Oppo made quite a name for themselves last year with the Find 5, one of the first phones with the 1080p display. Following in the footsteps of the Find 5, the N1 also has a couple of firsts. Like for example, it's the first phone to ship with Cyanogen Mod on board. Here I have a Cyanogen Mod limited edition of the Oppo N1, but since it's pretty simple to switch between Cyanogen Mod and Oppo's own color OS, in this video let's take a look at both. So before we start, if this is your first time here or in case your memory isn't what it used to be, my name's Ash, this is C4E Tech and you're watching my full review of the Oppo N1. The Oppo N1 is a huge phone. To give you some perspective, here's the N1 side by side with the Galaxy Note 3. The Oppo N1 packs a huge 5.9 inch Full HD IPS display which is great and has awesome viewing angles. The colors are natural and everything sharp, crisp and clear. 1080p over 5.9 inches gives the N1 a pixel density of 373 pixels per inch. It's not the slimmest phone around at 9mm and weighs in at a hefty 213 grams. This is largely due to the full metal aluminum alloy frame inside, just like with the Find 5. Though it's definitely not a phone for single-handed usage, the build quality seems solid. No creaking or wobbling of any kind. One of the main USBs or unique selling points of the Oppo N1 is its 13 megapixel swiveling camera, and it works great. Oppo has tested this to last for 100,000 rotations, so longevity shouldn't be an issue. The camera takes pretty good photos too. The color reproduction is good and images are crisp and sharp. Additionally, the camera can swivel 206 degrees to let you take 13 megapixel selfies. 1080p video recording is also smooth, lots of detail and a decent bitrate. There are two more USBs for the Oppo N1. Number one, the little 1.5 square inch touch area at the back called O-Touch. This pretty much lets you scroll through any screen and additionally lets you double tap to snap pictures with the camera open. Pretty good. Number 2. The O-Click Remote This basically pairs with your phone's Bluetooth and since the N1 uses Bluetooth 4 Auto, it doesn't really consume a lot of battery either. Now add the O-Click to your keychain and you can use it to find your phone or use your phone to find your keys. The O-Click even alerts you when you leave your phone behind and vice versa. Me personally, I really like the fact that I could use the find your phone option to pretend I had a call and escape a few very annoying and awkward social conversations. Additionally, the O-Click also serves as a remote, remote shutter key. So hit the O-Click with the camera open and the N1 shoots a picture. Pretty sweet. Now let's move on to what's underneath the hood. The Oppo N1 is powered by the Snapdragon 600 chipset. While not the latest, it's no slouch. It houses 4 Crate 300 cores clocked at 1.7GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 320 GPU and 2 gigs of RAM. While it's not a benchmark beast by any means, the Oppo N1 does perform really great when it comes to real-time performance. With say, for example, gaming, the Oppo N1 managed to run any graphically intensive title that we threw at it with ease. Smooth with no lag or frame rate drops. Audio quality via the internal speakers is also quite good. And when it comes to the included earphones, the quality is awesome. As far as battery life goes, the N1 is powered by a non-user replaceable 3610mAh battery and the battery life is great. On our looping video playback tests, we got about 9.5 hours of playback on Cyanogen Mod and 12 hours on ColorOS before the N1 ran out of juice. Oppo's ColorOS seems to do a much better job of optimizing the battery. Don't get me wrong here, with other OS you will get all day battery life with moderate to heavy usage, but with ColorOS it's about 20% better. Now let's talk about software. First, let's start with Cyanogen Mod. The N1 currently runs Cyanogen Mod 10.2. Most of you might have used or at least seen Cyanogen Mod at some point of time, so I'm not really going to get into what Cyanogen Mod brings to the table, but rather what's different here on the Oppo N1. Since Cyanogen Mod for the N1 has been built for the N1, there are a few extra options available. Say for example, double tap to wake. Under language and input you find the O-Touch settings, it offers limited support for the rear touchpad. Under settings you have the O-Click options. Unfortunately, as of the latest Cyanogen Mod 10.2 on the N1, O-Click doesn't work. But don't worry, this has been confirmed to have been fixed with the next release, so just wait for Cyanogen Mod 11 and it should work. Barring this, it's the Cyanogen mod we've all come to know and love, smooth, stable, with tons of tweaks. Now let's move on to ColorOS. Well, most reviews you see you've seen favor Cyanogen mod over ColorOS on the Oppo N1, but this is not most reviews. 
I'm actually one of the minority that really likes ColorOS. It's flashy, loads of slick animations and transitions, and pretty themable. You get a bunch of themes to change the way your phone looks and all this without negatively affecting performance. No matter what theme or transition you choose, the N1 keeps chugging away. Smooth and stable as always. You also get a bunch of options that's unique to ColorOS. For example, turn the camera around and the camera app opens up. You can set a favorite app to launch by double tapping the O touch area. This is a little too sensitive so I prefer to leave it off. Pull down from the top left corner and you can launch apps via gestures that you've already set. With the screen off, you can double tap to turn the display on. You can also draw a circle to launch the camera. Or my favorite, draw a V to turn on the flashlight. ColorOS kinda changes the perspective set by a certain leading manufacturer. Being feature fell does not equal lag. No, not on the N1. Apps open up quick with absolutely no lag. And as of today, like I mentioned earlier, battery life optimizations are better too. Another thing worth mentioning here is that Oppo is very open to consumer feedback. That's a refreshing change. Most of the features that you see on ColorOS started out as a feature request from someone on Oppo forums. So if there's a feature you'd like to see on the N1, all you need to do is head on over to Oppo forums, create a request, and if enough people want it, you could very well see it in the next update. And Oppo does update their phones quite regularly. While we are on the topic of Oppo's consumer friendliness, I want to share a personal experience of mine. My Oppo N1 shipped with a pair of defective earphones. When I contacted Oppo about it, they sent me new ones free of charge, yes, any reseller could have done that. What really impressed me here was that the replacement earphones were accompanied by a handwritten apology note. I mean, who does that anymore? I was blown away. Seriously, it was a very small gesture but kinda shows the intent that Oppo has. Yes, this phone runs on Snapdragon 600, not 800, and that's largely due to procurement issues, growing pains of a relatively new manufacturer. But everything about Oppo impresses me. Well, let's see. Number 1. The stainless steel frame. They could have gone with plastic, saved a few bucks, but no. Number 2. The way customers are handled. Number 3. The way features are added with feature requests from the forums. Number 4. Listening to consumer feedback and being the first manufacturer to ship a phone with Cyanogen mod out of the box. Number 5. The fact that the Find 5 is still receiving updates. Number 6. Real innovation. What's real innovation? Well, in my honest opinion, let it be the swiveling camera, the outage or o-click remote, these are all genuine innovations. Instead, Oppo could have gone with the crowd, added a fingerprint sensor or some gesture controls and be done with it. It just shows a company hoping to give people what they believe people would want to use, uh, what they feel they would use themselves, just not following the trend, following what's hot right now, just adding it to their phones. Well, but then again, things aren't all rosy here. There are two things that I really dislike about the Oppo N1. The first one is more of a preference, it isn't really a negative, but me personally, I find the Oppo N1 to be too big. If it were a little smaller, it would still be my daily daily driver right now instead of the Xiaomi Mi 3. But like I said, this is perspective. If you're someone who wants and likes big displays, then this wouldn't be a negative for you. The second one is a bit more universal. Oppo, I hope you're listening. The haptic feedback on the capacitive keys is way too feeble. And the backlight's not, br not too bright either. It was the same with the Find 5 too, so hopefully Oppo can chain this with the Find 7 and... Uh, as far as the M1 goes, this is the one thing that's been bugging me. Barring this issue, there's almost nothing that I could, there's nothing negative that I could mention about the N1. So anyway, I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe buttons. And if you want to pick up an Oppo N1, you can do that from merrymobiles.com. I'll leave direct links right below the like button. So what do you guys think about the Oppo N1? Brand recognition, size, CPU, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. So anyway, once again, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys soon in the next one. Till then, this is Ash here from C4E Tech, signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.